delighted to have Tommy Hughes here with me today, who on Monday, I believe, set the world record for uh, over 60s in the marathon. Is that correct, Tommy? Yeah, that, that is correct. Yeah, that was uh, on Sunday past. Yeah. Sunday, Sunday. Yeah. Uh, uh, you, weren't, you weren't keeping holy the Sabbath, huh? No, well, I, <laughs> had, uh, I was on a mission. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, Jeannie, some inspiring mission. I'm absolutely delighted that you're, you're joining me. And so um, I think it's such a, I ran actually a marathon this year, Tommy. So I've got really interested in it, you know, just on my own here in Brussels. I had a, a person out on the bike with me. And uh, just when I saw, when I saw what you've done, what you've achieved, I just had to chat to you. So um, yeah. I'm going to, uh, I'm actually going to share your slides here. Just a bit of an intro to, to, uh, yourself and um, your running. So oh, again, I've started at the end. We'll have to go back to the start. So, so we're going to be chatting about the, the this most recent record on Sunday. Not just that though, because in my research, Tommy, I saw that you had a great year last year as well with records in your age category last year also. Yeah, um, last year uh, I broke the world record five times and five different uh, distances for a 59 year old. Uh, I started off uh, in April at Rotterdam uh, Marathon where I ran two years uh, 30, 15. Mm -hmm. And I was a bit good at then that I didn't run under the 230. But when I, I got back to the accommodation and uh, kind of everything kind of came float back, somebody said that I'd got the World uh, Marathon for a 59 year old, yeah. and I and I was delighted with that, you know. And that softened then I, the blow a little bit. Uh, a lot, and then I look, I asked them where did he get the information from, and he put me onto a site, and uh, I just noticed there was uh, I had a chance for a lot of different uh, distances to go for, mm -hmm. and that's what I've been doing ever since, going after world records for my particular age but when I turned 60 I just opened the door for uh, over 60s records yeah. records yeah. so I've been I've just been going about trying to pick them off as I go along Jeez you're doing some job so far anyway um, yeah. So look this this is just the most recent one there that I, actually a friend of mine knew that I was into the run and he sent me it on and just thought yeah incredible just read up on it and saw it BBC Sports so that, that's some nice coverage you might chat a bit about this one because this was a record then from earlier this year yeah this, year that, this year that was uh, Rahini 5 Miler and uh, I was going for the world records for uh, 8k which is slightly shorter than the 5 mile so it qualifies that uh, if you do a 5 mile race you can get the 8k record so uh, I ran um 2552 I think it was uh, for uh, a world record for over 60s 8k so that started the ball rolling this year Brilliant. then after that um, I decided to enter the Irish Masters indoor uh, championships running the 3000 meters indoors now I, I'm not a track specialist and uh, to run indoors is even more strange to me but Ended up at breaking the 3,000 metres indoor world record for over 60s in February. And then after that, the COVID came along and kind of closed everything down. Yeah. So uh, it was a bit of a strange time. Mm -hmm. And then uh, recently I, I picked it up again. I seen there was a 15K race in Letterkenny and Donegal. So uh, I thought, well, I've got to have a go at that then because there's yeah. not many 15K races about. So I ran it and uh, broke the world record for uh, for 15k by three and a half minutes. Excellent. And, and that day, then uh, my son paced me for a 10 mile race here in uh, Lisburn on the same course that I ran on Sunday at the Down Royal. Mm -hmm. And he paced me to a world record for 10 mile. And then at the Antrim Coast Half Marathon with Mo Far and all the rest, I got a chance of going for the. Uh, over 60s uh, half marathon record, which I got at 71.09. Uh, and then the marathon was the next one. And uh, last Tuesday, I got a text saying the whole thing was cancelled. And I was gutted because I had put so much work into it, mm -hmm. so much training for it. And then I rang the organizer 
uh, of Championship Ireland, and he talked to me, and he says, uh, "Let's let's go with it anyway, and we'll follow the the COVID uh, restrictions. So we'll just have a very small, limited field, mm -hmm. uh, and a, a legitimate course, a, a permit. It's got the permit for the uh, Northern Ireland and UK permit for the course and everything. So everything was in place on Saturday and Sunday." but we chose to go for Sunday because we thought it would be a better day. But it turned out Saturday was a better day, but that's hindsight. Yeah. So we went for it on Sunday. I had pacemakers with three, four pacemakers and plus seven runners to run the distance, the marathon distance. Yeah. yeah. And it was very, very one day. But uh, with the pacemakers, then it helped for the first 10 mile, you know, halfway, just to be able to shelter yeah. behind them. Yes, and then I think uh, the the one started to take us toll around the 21, 22, 23 mile mark, uh, and I was starting to slow down. I think I lost uh, getting onto the three uh, two hours thirty at about twenty four mile when it dropped just below the six minute mile, and and then I, I son was on the, the bicycle, and I said, "Are we still on course?" And he says, "No, you've dropped outside the two thirty. Uh, pace so I, I picked up the pace for the last two mile and ran as hard as I could run but I was so close to it and yeah, I was a bit, yeah. a bit got it that I didn't get under the, the 230 but I got the world record which was the main thing that I set out to do Yeah. and uh, hopefully I'll get another chance maybe this year to try and get under that 230 yeah well look that was extraordinary yeah like uh, and you know is it like in your reflection afterwards, is there like on a scale of zero to a hundred, a hundred being absolutely over the moon, is there, does that niggle at you a little bit? Or are you just kind of like, look, oh my God, like what I've achieved fastest in the world in my age category for a marathon. Like, does that eclipse all of that not getting under 230 or is there that little part of you that just wants the time as well? <laughs> it's, I have to say it's a massive part. It really is a massive part because I've run under two hours 30 and four decades in the 1980s, 1990s, 2000s, 2010s, and I want to run under 230 in 2020s. Mm -hmm. And then I think there's no one ever has done, achieved that, running under two hours 30 in five decades. Yeah, yeah. So that's the reason, the reason for trying to get under the 230. That is the main goal that I am trying to achieve in the next whatever nine years or whatever that mm, the, the mm. Tw 2020s come along yeah. so I would, yeah yeah i would like to uh, get it as soon as possible and get it out of the way so that's the reason why i'm i'm keep going and keep striving for for to try and get that can i ask you then tommy just in terms of like being at the age you're at right and and, and yeah. the time because you'd imagine then that your time with your body, I suppose, as well, they say diminishes yeah, yeah. in terms of muscle, etc. Et yeah, yeah. And, and like, is there a sense of you want to get this done in the next sort of year or two, if it's going to happen in terms of the 230, that is? Correct. That is correct. Because every year goes by now at, at my age, I don't know how, how slower I, I get. I just don't know, yes. you know, so it's, if I can get that done as quickly as I can, then I don't mind after that how slow I get. It doesn't really bother me that much, but I'll keep trying to break them world records. But this, the main reason this, <clears throat> what I set out to do on Sunday was to try and get under the two hours 30 mm. because I know I have a limited time to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, uh, well, we're going we're gonna to be touching on, on a couple of things, but I think... Uh, I just wanted to share this photo because it also brings in the gear as well that you're wearing, and the, I think they're the 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 alpha flies. But we'll we'll chat a little bit about that. I'm just gonna run quickly through the slides, and then we'll just be myself and yourself chatting. I want to talk yeah. about your efforts with Owen as well, whether you yeah. guys train together. Um, just as well, do you get any young bucks who are, are a bit cheeky that you have to, you know, put set them straight on these courses, these 20, 30 year olds, you know, showing them a clean set of heels. And I also want to chat to you a bit about race tactics and, uh, you know, using the, the, the pace setters. And this is kind of what you mentioned there about uh, about the, the different um, 
the, the decades and then wanting that one yeah. in 2020. And uh, I yeah, read yeah. up that you were in the Olympics in, in 92. Is that correct? In Barcelona? Correct. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, so that might be nice to, to chat about what it's like to represent your country at Olympics. So as you can yeah. see, my mind goes everywhere because there's so many things I want to chat to you about. But uh, again, we'll see in terms of your, the amount of time you have and stuff and, and that I'm happy to adapt it and, and just chat about what we what we can chat about. I think a big one for me, though, is also to talk to you about um, about your your drive, Tommy. Like, what, so where did you, like how did the running start? Like, when in your in your life, and and where did yeah where did that all begin? Well, uh, just after I got married, I kind of was starting to put on weight, you know, and uh, I wanted to try and take the weight down again. So I joined the local GAA club and I started playing Gaelic football for a while. And uh, they stuck me on the reserve team. So being competitive that I am, I wanted to make the, the main team. So I thought if I did a bit of running, I would take the weight down. Yes. And I, was, I just accidentally found out it was better at the running than the Gaelic <laughs> football. So uh, I ran my first marathon and it was the Belfast marathon. And I ran three years, one minute and something. But that was a good thing because it kind of said to myself, right, I want to break that three year barrier yes. straight away. Yes. So I trained a bit harder and uh, ended up around the next marathon in 2.35. And then I thought, well, there's something there that uh, I can uh, develop even more. Yes. So everything, it was like, uh, everything fell into place, you know, as years went by. Mm -hmm. I got more competitive and I got into uh, a running clubs that kind of helped me progress as well. And uh, I joined clubs running clubs to, to make me pro progress as well. If I thought I was outgrowing one club, I'd jump onto another club and, and, yeah. and keep the motivation going. And through the years that I just built up and built up and I studied a lot of, uh, in them days there was no uh, YouTube or anything like that. Yeah. I studied uh, magazines and stuff and tried to glean as much information as I could for, for uh, competing and nutrition and all the rest. So... That's just basically trial and error, error that uh, kind of got this far. Mm -hmm. But it's fascinating. And I'm kind of interested because I'm, I'm big into the GAA. I play over here in, in Belgium. But yeah. I personally would have done well in fitness tests, like running, running tests, you know, within yeah. the Gaelic setup, which always made yeah. me think, Jeannie, maybe there's something on that side of things. Uh, did, did it help you get onto the team you wanted? Or did you just say, right, screw the GAA. I'm moving into fully into the running here. Well, as a matter of fact, I did get onto the senior team maybe a couple of games, and then I thought, well, I enjoy the running more than the the gilly because yeah. it's a team sport. So you're either letting the team down or the team's letting you down. Yeah. So yeah. I thought, but the running is an individual sport, and you're the only one that you can blame. You know, mm -hmm. you only blame yourself. So it kind of suited me to to what I, I wanted to do and suited me better. But again, running can be a team sport uh, as well. Like uh, you're running for a team and you're trying to do your best for a team as well. So, but yeah. if you run run the best to your ability, there's, there's no excuses. It's, it all depends, you, can, you know, so. Yeah, so yeah. And there's no referees either. So there's that sense yeah. of sort of, you know, yeah. uh, would you call it objectivity is kind of brought out of running in a sense there's you're not yeah. it's, it, it's yeah. that, it brings it right back to the person that's right as well like uh, uh, as you say referees are kind of a i gotta say and a, a lot of ways the the game goes and in, in different sports and stuff so but the, uh, there's no referees in running so it's up to the individual to do as best they can mm. unless they go out and start tripping people like <laughs> <laughs> you know. I won't ask you if you, if you resorted to that. <laughs> no, no I, don't, I don't need to resort to that. Yeah, exactly. Should I be <laughs> tripping you? <laughs> um, and Tommy, come here. Like, how? What age was that then when you started running? I was about uh, 23, 20, okay. 22, 23. Yeah, and then I won the the Derry Martin uh, when I was twenty four and two hours twenty four, two twenty four. Wow. Uh, and then I won it again the next year in 2019 on a course record. Wow, and then wow. they stopped it and they brought it back in 2013, 29 years after I won it the first time. And I won it again Great. at 53. God. And they, after that, I thought, well, that's it. I can't, you know, get better than that. You know, it can't yeah, get better yeah. than that. But 
I just kept going. Kept kept motoring on. And like yeah. so you know, so I think you said your first marathon you got over just over three hours and then by the time you'd done your second one, did you get it down to two thirty five? Is that correct? Um, that's correct, yeah. That's yeah, a that big was chunk. It. That's a big it chunk is. to take off. What did you learn? Like what had you learned between them? Oh just to train harder. That's the secret. Just to train harder because what I was doing for Belfast, I wasn't doing enough, but I didn't know any better because it was all new to me. And I was running like uh, four miles three times a week. And that was all I was doing. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so uh, like for three months build up to Belfast, that's all I was doing. And then I ran the three years on, on that. But I, I was going well up to the usual crack. It was going well up to about 20 miles. And then I just uh, uh, exploded. Like, and I was walking and stuff like that there. So, that three years it told me like, okay, if I train a bit harder, I'll, I'll, I'll get a bit quicker. And then the next thing it was 2.35 and I got, well, there's definitely something there that I can develop. And that's, that's the reason. I, and I've, I found out early in my running career that I was a marathon runner. And that's all. I like, I, I love training for the marathon because the man's going out and doing steady miles, especially my age now. I'm not you know, absolutely uh, eyeballs out at, at training and stuff. Like I go out and just steady train, train hard, but steady as well. So that's how the body can, can tick what I'm doing. But yeah. if I started doing speed work and, and stuff like that, too much of it, uh, it was it's chance of getting injured is, is a big possibility at my age, especially. And even at anybody's age and younger people as well to go from, you know, steady running to absolute, uh, training really hard it takes a lot of toll on the body you yeah. know yeah yeah and and you know what that's what I was going to ask you because you said you'd done the 3000 um, indoor so that's yeah. that's so that's 3k right would you consider that though because you said like you found that marathon is your pace so I was a yeah. bit surprised to hear you were doing 3k but would you consider that still in that endurance category even from 3 no. kilometers? no because no. When I when I was doing that three k, it was against uh, people all my age, so I wasn't out of my comfort zone, you know. Gotcha. Yeah. And um, the the world record that was going out to try and break was set by a guy uh, at fifty nine, so it was the same age as me. So basically, I was going after a record that I think I could achieve, yeah. but for. Uh, records that I'm trying to achieve in the over 60s, like the 5K and the 10K, they are tough for me if I'm training for a marathon. You know, if I was training for a shorter race, it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. But for training for a marathon, it's tough for me to get that leg speed going. So uh, I might leave the 5K and 10K to next year if I, to try and break them records, but uh, I'm working yeah. on the speeds. So, yeah, exactly. So you have to plan your sessions accordingly, yeah. right? Like, yeah. drop them off. What, yeah, that's why, that's why I wanted to, you know, get onto the 2.30 on Sunday then and just get that out of the way so that I don't have to concentrate on the marathon. But now I want to go again to try and get that under the 2.30. So it really leaves me uh, not able to concentrate on, on, on shorter races, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And for your body, are you going to take, will you take a week or two off? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting you to say that, actually. I uh, sense that it's, 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 it's all go, but your body feels pretty good. Yeah, the body the body is okay. Like, it feels good, and uh, I'm ready to go again, like, definitely. But, um, I know from, from my own body what, what it uh, can take, and if I felt like uh, there was a problem there, I would back off and, and shut the miles down a bit, and maybe you know, uh, drop them by half or whatever, just to get the body to recover. But the body's responding all the time. So I'm yeah. happy enough to keep uh, progressing. Great. And Tommy, do you work out with your son, Owen, who I, I have to mention this because I know yourself and himself have the fastest father-son marathons. And I think I've got your times here from Frankfurt. So your time was 2 hours 27, 52, and Owen's yeah. was 2, 31, 30. Um, yeah, yeah. And you had the wise head that you ran the the negative split, and he he ran yeah. a slightly longer second half. So, describe what was what, what was the emotions achieving that with him, and also if you guys trained together. Uh, it was unbelievable. Uh, like from all my achievements, that sits there at the top. 
easily because it's a father and son. Uh, even to go to the Olympics and all, it wouldn't be. I, I, I really enjoyed going to the Olympics in, in 92 in Barcelona and running for Ireland, but uh, I wasn't at my best at the Olympics because I, I got a stress fracture in my foot in January and the doctor said I wouldn't even make the Olympics. So wow. just to get there and run and compete and get into the stadium and uh, uh, see like the packed audience at the end of the when the closing ceremony was after the marathon, just to see all that there was unbelievable. But mm -hmm. to come back to my son, like uh, I set off at a pace that I thought I could hold uh, and going through halfway in 74. Owen, they kind of set off at a pace that he thought he could hold, but uh, he was in a group uh, and I might've been pulling him on maybe quicker than he wanted to go, but it, uh, he thought he could go. So, uh, the second half of the race, I was getting a bit quicker because I ran a negative split, uh, 73 something in the second half. And I caught sight of Owen at about three miles ago. And I was disappointed because I knew Owen was struggling and I knew the feeling that Owen was going through. Yeah. But uh, fair play to him. I went by, by him and I said, you okay? And he says, yeah, I'm okay. And uh, I had visions of him dropping out altogether and the whole... Uh, attempt going down down the drain. Yes. But he stuck to his guns and I ran as hard as I could. And as soon as I crossed the line, I was just looking back and waiting and waiting and waiting for him to show up. Yeah. And yeah. I, it was Owen that's had his idea to uh, go after the Fallon Sun record. So I didn't know if we we're anywhere near the record or not. So as soon as he crossed the line, I said, Did we get it? And Owen could hardly speak. And uh, he just said, yeah, we got it. And uh, <laughs> I was so delighted, you know, oh, I was so delighted. Such, oh, it's such a great uh, story. I hope you've allowed yourself a bit of a celebration that evening, a beer maybe, or a, a nice uh, meal. Yeah, well, the thing about me is uh, I, I've had a problem with uh, alcohol for a, a long time before that. And uh, uh, I decided to stop drinking uh, after my operation that I got um, two years ago in 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't drink now at all but uh, Owen had a few beers and uh, we went for a kebab if you... oh nice God I love a good kebab would have joined yeah. you <laughs> yeah that, that's uh, in Frankfurt and uh, it was good fun because we went in uh, to this uh, Turkish uh, kebab shop and we were talking to the guys that owned it and uh, we were telling them we had a father and son world record so they give us uh, freebies as well so it, it was oh, really nice. good yeah. Nice. Jeez, it always tastes better when it's a freebie as well. Yeah. <laughs> God, yeah. that's such a great story. I love that. And um and yeah, and I suppose just chatting just about like running and 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 also the side that it has on, on mental health, uh Tommy, yeah. because like do you find it like you often hear people referring to the runners high, you know, and and, yeah. and how it can help put them in, in a good place. Have you had yeah. have you seen that over your lifetime at running, you know? Definitely, running has uh, actually saved my life. I have to say, like it's kept me on an even keel for a long time. Like uh, over the years, the ups and downs that I've had. If you go out for a run, it clears your head, and you kind of think about uh, better, and you you realize that uh, like life's good type of thing. Yeah. Uh, so it is a, a a good thing for people just to go out, a bit of exercise, even cycling or whatever, a bit of exercise. Or even in the gym, stuff like that there. And just anything to do with the, a bit of exercise, like walking as well. Uh, another a bit of exercise, like it's all good, you know, they're all yeah. really, really good. But I'm a, a competitive person as well. So I like to compete if I can compete. But at the end of the day, if it all just comes down to fitness and going out and being fit, I, I'll do that, you know, without yeah. any bother at all. Yeah. So, yeah, while there is that motivation with the chasing the records yeah. and it sets a fire under you, you'd be doing yeah. it regardless for, for yeah. that side as well. I yeah. think it's really important. Just that's why I wanted to, to mention it briefly, like is because people are going through in a lot of countries, the second wave now with confinement, some people yeah. feel that bit of hard to get their energy up, you know, on positivity yeah. levels. And I, I think if they can take one thing from the message you've just said there is, is just get out, even if it's 15 to 30 yeah. minutes on a bike, yeah. Yeah. Um, walking, fa walking yeah. fast, walking slow, yeah. taking in yeah. the nature. I think it's, um, yeah. I think it's a big, it's a big takeaway. And I think actually running here in Brussels, just like, 
during the first uh, wave or the first lockdown, I'd never seen so many people out running in my life, you know, it, was, it seemed to yeah. have a massive uptake and it was great yeah. to see, you know. It was the same here in, in, in Northern Ireland, the yeah. loads and loads of different people out running. I was, it was always like, it might stick with some people or it might not and maybe say, no, it's not for me type of thing. Mm. But mm. some people out there and they've gone out to the running for the first time, they could actually realize they're pretty good runners at the end of the day if they just yeah. kind of keep at it a bit. And some people get get into it in a big way. And there's yeah. a lot of really good runners out there that don't even know they're good runners until they even try yeah. to, to do it. That's yeah. unbelievable. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. And actually, um, well, what I've found as well, and, and you kind of mentioned, yeah, it's an individual sport, but you can make it a team sport, you know? And so yeah. even checking in with friends and saying, how are you doing on your times yeah. or sending somebody a little WhatsApp after you've done a run can be massive yeah. to create a team environment. Correct as well. as And, and go, if you want to go out for a run, like, uh, you know, what a person type of thing, yeah. you know, it's great for, uh, motivation for yourself if you're just going uh, I don't really want to go for a run or uh, maybe my mate down the road maybe he want to go for a run what's me type of thing and, and you go out and you do it and you feel good then afterwards yeah, yeah. and it's always something you've shared with that person as well Correct. which is a nice, yeah. nice one. is there a great camaraderie with runners anyway like the, every yeah. you don't get a bad runner you know they're all friendly as anything yeah it's a nice it's a nice buzz Tommy, yeah. can I ask you about Barcelona because you mentioned it and was that a massive blow getting that stre stress factor in the lead up? How were you? How did you feel when you got that news? And and then how did you get the resiliency to turn up and, and crack on anyway, you know? Yeah, well, uh, I got the stress factor in January and I was absolutely flying because I'd ran 2.13.59 and uh, Marrakesh Marathon. That and was your record, correct? Yeah, that's that my your fastest, Excellent. fastest time I've ever done. Uh, yeah, uh, but when I got the stress fracture in uh, the end of January, February, I was absolutely gutted because, uh, uh, again, I was in really, really good shape. And then to be on crutches for six weeks and then the rehabilitation after that, uh, just to be at the marathon, uh, I was happy, but I knew I could have been in better shape. And uh, I... You never know what mm. what could have happened on the day type of thing. If I had been right at the, my peak, you, you yeah. don't know. But it was a tough race anyway because it was very, very hot. It was like 32 degrees centigrade. So um, a lot of Europeans struggled yes. in the race anyway. So uh, I don't know, even at my peak, I don't know if I, how I would have fared. But just to be there, I was happy. Yeah, of course, representing your country. God, yeah. that must have been... A uh, very proud moment to wear the, yeah. I suppose you're wearing the Irish singlet and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still have it yet. <laughs> and can I ask you, just out of interest, then, how did you fare in terms of competing against the fellow Irish? And then, who, do you remember the winning time from that, that from that Olympics? Yeah, it was pretty slow. I think it was, um, I think it was two fourteen. I think it was. It was a a Korean. I think uh, won it, and a Japanese guy was second, and a German. Who ran an absolute blinder was third. Wow. Um, the just you know, um, it was you unbelievable. Remember, how many yeah. Irish competitors were there? Yourself? Ah, uh, well, John Tracy was the main guy who had oh, won yeah. the silver in 1984, and a bit of a hero of mine because. When he won that uh, or the silver medal in, in Los Angeles in the 1984 Olympics, uh, it was unbelievable run from John, and just to meet him and train with him was was brilliant. Yeah. And then we had uh, Andy Rowan, who was based over in America as well, from Ireland. He was the other representative, but uh, he dropped out of the race. So uh, uh, John, I think, finished like 24th or 25th, I think. And I ended up 72nd out of 144. So I was happy enough with my performance, but there was a lot of dropouts because it was very, very warm, you know. Yeah, so 30 degrees is crazy. Yeah. Heat. How did Marrakesh compare to that heat? Was Marrakesh oh, a warm one? Mar Marrakesh was in January, so it was like that rained the, the night before. It was perfect. <laughs> and it was about 16 degrees centigrade. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. Oh, completely different. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
And then that would lead me just a bit to talk about like running sort of economy or, or tactics um, of, of races. So like on a particularly warm day like that in Barcelona, do, do you have to really adapt your, when you realise it's going to be 33 degrees, does that play on your mind the evening before? Or are you very much expecting that from a couple of weeks out and planning how much water you'll take on and whatnot? Yeah. Uh, well, I went over to America for six weeks uh, to New Jersey to train there because I had uh, people that I could stay with, you know, uh, and that it was the same temperature, like really hot in the summertime. So I, I was over there acclimatizing to the, the heat factor. Mm. And then uh, when I went to at the Olympics, like even even at the start of the race, when you're throwing water over yourself before the, the race started and it was just drying straight away, it was a bit scary. Yeah. And uh, I think because... I had lost so much uh, training and fitness. I was just running there to try and compete the, the race rather than to race the race. Yeah. So it, it was a wee bit different for me. If I think I've had been uh, super, super fit, I might have I struggled, you know, going with the pace and, and hanging, hanging in there type of thing. I might have struggled mm. at the finish, but mm. I don't know. But uh, I... I I just took it the way I could only take it and run the best I could on the day. And yeah. I was I was happy enough to 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 get it. And as I say, just to, to run and finish it and yeah and compete in the Olympics. Yeah, of course. Some achievement. Um, yeah. I see you have a few tattoos. Do you have the Olympic rings? No? Yeah, I do. Oh, nice. Yeah. Barcelona, nice. Ireland. Uh oh, good stuff. <laughs> Um, and then I was going to ask, like, in terms of competitors, I, I, I haven't done enough running to, to kind of really analyze this. But do you how do you use do you use competitors in your psyche or do you very much run your own race? Do you ever say, OK, that guy's ahead of me, but I've got him. I can tell I've got him. You know, is there elements of that that kick in? Oh, definitely. Uh, no problem at all. It's just uh, um, if, the, if there's people around that you can use in the risk. Uh, you use them, you know, and if people, somebody's up the road a bit and uh, you're starting to haul them in, that helps you as well. That keeps you motivated. It keeps you going. Mm. And uh, that you're in a race, so that's that's the way it is. So you're you're racing whoever's around you or whoever's in front of you. So that, that is my motivation. But you always hope or you're always thinking about your own pace. And if you're going too hard, like, at that race in Rotterdam last year, I got into a group uh, earlier on in the race and I was running with the group, but I thought to myself, this is a bit quick for me. I really don't want to be in this group, but if I drop back, I'll be running on my own. Mm. So I thought, well, I got to stay in this group, <clears throat> but I paid for it in, in the end. Like I ran positive, like I ran slower the second half of the race because I hung in with a group that was going quicker than I really wanted to go. So you kind of have to think, uh, on your feet and think, yeah. is this too fast or is this too slow? Like I've been in races where I've got into a group and I'm going to myself, well, this is this is not fast enough. I gotta go, and I le left the group and went on. Mm. You know, you mm. kind of have to think within yourself. You have to get to know your own pace and and how how, how quickly you can run uh, yeah. without without uh, going over the edge type of thing. So um, I say. Uh, I've been in, in, in different scenarios and races, so I kind of know from experience, and that's the thing, I have a lot of experience behind me in running marathons to know what's right and what's wrong, but you never know till on the day what way you're going to run. The, the, um, the other thing I was going to ask you was, I, I just seen on, on an article about your nutrition as well, that you adapted, I don't know which race it was, but, but in the weeks leading up, I think you'd gone more protein heavy, maybe on the, the nutrition for a few days before you, you allowed yourself more carbs in the couple of days leading up. How, how big a role does nutrition play in your whole, um, your repertoire, Tommy, in terms of hitting these times? Yeah, well, it, it is a, it's very a big factor. Um, I, I watch, uh, I eat healthy all the time. Uh, I kind of eat uh, to try and put the uh, energy into the, the body so that I can run the big miles and stuff. Uh, as well as that, I, I kind of take uh, beetroot juice, which I think helps as well. Yes. Uh, uh, maybe I take an iron supplement sometimes just to boost the iron. Yeah. Other than that, it's just uh, mainly eat healthy and uh, 
when you talked about the, the protein, eating protein for three or four days, that's called the, the bleed out where you do that for leading up to the week, leading up to the marin where you go, you do a long run and then you deplete your energy right, right down to, to nearly nil by just eating protein where you're getting no carbohydrates into your body at all. So you're kind of cheating your body mm-hmm. and to, uh, kind of going, it's a tough uh, regime to do. Yeah. Uh, you, go, you go, you're running with no energy at all in the three, three days and then you switch to the carbohydrates and uh, leading up to the marathon, that means your carbohydrates uh, at levels get far higher than they normally get. So you're uh, in the marathon where the, the energy is starting to run out maybe in the last six miles, you've still got a bit of extra energy mm. to keep going. Mm. But I didn't do that on Sunday because, again, as I say, it's cheating the body and the body kind of gets to know what's going on and, and it kind of, uh, switches around so it, sometimes it doesn't work at all and it's a tough regime as well to do yeah. especially if the uh, marathon's like in frankfurt or somewhere and you're trying to get the foods that uh kind of the protein and and, and the carbohydrates kind of uh, at different times in a, in a foreign country type of thing yeah and you probably don't want to give away too much about your running strategy because there might be competition out there listening in. Do you have any go-to meals and lead up like, because everyone told me how important it is to keep it neutral enough, not to be going for super spicy curries or anything the, the evening correct. before. Um, how, yeah. What would be your yeah, opinion on that? I, I would agree with that as well. It's just uh, plain pasta and stuff like that there. and mm. uh, it's Really, there's no real secret like pasta, potatoes, anything to high carbohydrates leading up to the few days before the marathon is yeah. always the best. And hydrate as well, just drinking water, you know, a few days before. Not over like excessive, but just making sure you just hydrate uh, kind of normally and make sure you don't uh, uh, miss a drink and, and just just doing the normal things that leading up to the marathon and relax and, and, and wait for, for the, the day to come. Great. And, and last uh, question, Tommy, because I'm uh, like, you've had an incredible career and, and, and particularly as well, this, you know, imagine getting that record across the, the four decades. Anyway, in my opinion, what you've achieved is amazing, regardless of whether you hit that or not. But what about rest and recovery? Because yeah. like that's vital in terms of in terms of this, because your body's going through a lot during the miles that you're putting in the joints, etc. So yeah. How important is it to give your body that rest and recovery um, in between sessions and listening to your body? Yeah, that's what, what you said at the very end, listening to your body. The body will tell you if you're overexerting or if you're not exerting enough. Sometimes, like, if you want to... What I go out and I, I'll do a steady run at what I call three-quarter pace, so it's just a, a, a run that... Uh, uh, it's, it's not pushing the boat out, but it, it's it's not hanging back either. So I just go steady running, uh, and that's mainly marathon training. Whereas if I was working towards a shorter distance, then I would go out for slower runs, and then when I, I go do the fast session, do it even faster than I would normally do for the marathon sessions. Yeah. Yeah. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, but the the body is the main. Uh, thing that will tell you if you're overexerting, if you're feeling really, really tired, you're doing too much. You know, you're, you're so just back it off a bit. Uh, if you're, but the body's a wonderful thing too. That you don't know where the where the point is where you could go over the edge or not. So I'm always pushing towards that point, but not trying to go over the edge. If you know what I mean. So I'm I'm just trying to get as much rest as I can. Do my training. Uh, if I want to do a long run, I'll just do a long run. Uh, if I want to do, uh, I feel tired today. I'll just do a, a five miler. I'll do a five miler. It's just, yeah. it's, it's if you go to a regime where you're stuck in the same, uh, doing the same miles and doing this and that, all the same, it kind of get boring and you get a bit stale on it. But if you go, uh, I don't feel like doing a long run today. I'll just do a five mile, and then I'm going, yeah. well, it's not a bad day. Uh, the weather wise it's, it's pretty good I'll do a long run and that's what I do yeah <laughs> yeah it's nice having that flexibility where it's not so strict and rigid that you can't have a day Correct. like that where you ease off on yeah. yourself and say okay I'll do a little bit yeah. less day and then someday you might feel yeah. like 
kicking on and doing a longer run, which yeah. is which is yeah. nice. So yeah. Um, okay. Well, look, look, Tom. Thanks a million for giving up your time. So what's next now? You've so have you put you are you shelving the five and the ten for the minute, and you're going to go back for a marathon? Is that the next big one? I think uh, I have to try and get that marathon. Uh, try and get onto the two thirty, and that's trying to get uh, guys that'll go. Uh, a few pacers that'll go 20 mile for me uh, and uh, hopefully that happens for the years out uh, I'll probably do in 5Ks and 10Ks with the, the club the new club that uh, we've uh, kind of got together this year called Strive uh, Racing Club Great uh, and, uh, Is that in Derry? Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's in County Derry County Tyrone, you know that area yeah. like, uh, and it's uh, Pretty good guys. Like uh, I'm looking forward to racing when the team racing starts again. With this COVID, it's really uh, took us toll on, on team racing and everything. So I'm I'm looking forward to getting racing with the guys and stuff like that. I know I'm 60 and all the rest, and uh, I can hang in the back of them. But uh, you know, my time will come around when hopefully I'll, I'll hand on uh, information that will help them be guys get better. And uh, we'll we'll just take it from there and enjoy the sports yeah. uh, is the main thing, and uh, we just get out there and, and stay fit. Yeah, brilliant. Well, look, anybody who's going to be listening to this podcast has got a huge amount of information from you and all your passion for running. So, Tommy Hughes, thanks a million, and I'll be keeping track of your progress definitely this year because uh, I hope I hope you you hit what your your targets and what you're looking for on it. Thank you very much. Thank you.